So we all know that packaging can have such a positive impact from quality of life to the environment. Now let's ask our experts how this can be. Why is sustainability such a crucial topic today? On the one hand, the environmental topics become more and more urgent. Pollution, resources, energy. But there's another perspective on this. If you look from a brand company's perspective, brands in the past were built on the quality and safety promise and on the innovation promise. Now the brand companies today are concerned that those two issues are not enough to differentiate. So in today's world, brands are also built on the sustainability promise. And that means that sustainability profiles become crucial for brands. Now what does that have to do with packaging? Packaging only contributes 2% of a carbon footprint. But for the consumer, packaging makes a product and the brand company visible and tangible. So it has a lighthouse effect. On the other hand, it's also a critical spot. You may have the best performance on processes, company level and everywhere else, even your products on sustainability, but if your package fails and somebody builds a story around this, you're in a critical stage. So in this respect, sustainability is and will be for the future so a key issue to build brands. Let's uh, get the perspective of the uh, brand people here. Uh, Lars, uh, what is the role of package machinery in Nestle's strategy for uh, sustainability? Yeah, I think that depends on what perspective you take. If we, as a company, we have a, a life cycle approach to our products, and if you look at the life cycle approach, uh, packaging machinery as such is a very, very small part of the total footprint of our, our uh, products. But on the other hand, if we look from an operational perspective, which is also one of our focus areas, uh, decoupling economic growth and decoupling production increase with environmental impacts, then packaging machinery has an extremely important play, role to play, in particular in reducing energy consumption, emissions, uh, reducing waste, downtown, downtime, and uh, things like that. So from that perspective, packaging machinery is really, or machinery in general in production, is a key factor. Let's hear from the other side of the Nestle organization, the automation side. Uh, Brian, you've been a champion of international standards. How can automation standards help you manage global packaging operations more efficiently? Let me answer that in two parts, John. Um, the first part, as machines get faster, more complex, more capable, it doesn't make sense anymore to try and dictate a, an automation platform to the OEMs. Instead, we would rather that they use the automation platform that best fulfills the requirements for their machine. What we do expect is that they can use international standards and guidelines, such as OMAC PAC ML, to more easily allow the machines to be integrated, to provide commonality for maintenance and for operators, and to allow Nestle to reduce the total cost of ownership by having less integration costs across the line. Secondly, as we move to purchasing more goods and services and machinery from countries like China and India, we need to ensure that these machines are capable of being exported and integrated into other countries. To do that, we have to follow international standards. So we need to make sure that the standards that we have are also capable of being applied uh, wherever the engineering is done. So with that, I'd like to invite your guests to become corporate members of OMAC and to join me in working on the OMAC packaging work group. I certainly second the motion. I hope uh, some people tonight come and find out a little more about OMAC and how it can give you an even footing around the world as well. Uh, and that's especially important because of markets like China. And I'm going to ask Maurizio Tarozzi uh, to tell us a little about a uh, presentation he gave. Uh, you told us that China's middle class is growing exponentially. And how is this changing their requirements for packaging machinery 
Yes, thank you, John. There are two main factors. The first uh, is that the middle class is asking more reliable and productive machines in China than they are capable to produce. And this is a big opportunity for European and North American machine builders. Second, there is a recent uh, research from the Freedomia Group that uh, stated uh, in 2014, the 49% of the total uh, packaging machine will be sold in China and in Asia. And China alone will count for the 41%. So this is a great opportunity for new market. And this is also why we as BNR have developed a new global packaging solution team to better support our global OEMs on their expansion on new markets. Thank you, Maurizio. So we've been talking a little about uh, sustainability and energy consumption. And I know that Urshad Khan uh, has some thoughts on that. Uh, how can better energy consumption or monitoring, better technology to monitor energy, how can that help you justify new machinery costs? That's a good question, John. Um, as, as an end user, and uh, we always are challenged uh, to, to run an operation more reliable and cost-effective way. And one of the biggest areas uh, the PACTIV has been working on is energy consumption. And along those lines, uh, we are looking at uh, power measurement modules or some of those energy consumption modules because when you look at it, uh, production machine, uh, when you take the big machine and you run the production on those, uh, it takes same amount of uh, energy uh, for the lighter product. So what can we do to standardize some of those energy user consumptions uh, so we can standardize that and use it as a user-friendly and cost-effective way of running the production? Great. And I'm going to uh, go back to Lars uh, to ask if there are any industry initiatives the packaging machine builders can join uh, to become more of an active part of this whole process. Yeah, there's both industry organizations and uh, packaging value chain initiatives going on, which I would say still lack involvement from packaging machinery manufacturers. Uh, one example of an organization would be Europen, the European Organization for Packaging and Environment, which is an industry association where you will find both retailers, brand owners, also packaging uh, converters, as well as uh, packaging material manufacturers. So this is typically a forum where uh, machinery manufacturers and automation could also make their voice heard and also try to follow and understand what specific requirements are put on packaging machinery in the context of sustainable development. And I think uh, not long ago there was also a press release that the American organization, a sister organization called AmeriPen, will also be launched uh, soon. So from the North American perspective, this is also an organization there where uh, packaging manufacturers could be active. Apart from that, one of the biggest global initiatives that are going on for the time being is something called the Global Packaging Project, which is going on under the auspices of uh, the Consumer Goods Forum, which reunites 100 companies throughout the packaging value chain on a global basis to define a common language and common metrics for how to talk about packaging and sustainability. Here again, uh, it's dominated by converters and material manufacturers, and the voice of uh, machinery industry would be more than welcome. Good, good. And I know that uh, in the U.S. where I live, the uh, PMMI is the Machinery Association. They've published some research and uh, in fact, most recently, they published a research on machine communications. Uh, that report is available at their stand at Interpac. They're in uh, Hall 12. Uh, the stand number is F1. Uh, see them if you have a chance. Uh, I'm going to go back to Thomas. And uh, along with some of these issues of, of uh, machinery, uh, there are some other basic issues facing packagers, and one of those is um, how consumer products are being copied at an alarming rate. And, and does packaging give manufacturers uh, any new advantages against uh, this kind of activity? 
Yeah, let's put some facts on the table. Investigations have shown that 23% of the new launch products in Western Europe are copied by private label within one to four weeks. If you give it another five, uh, six weeks, another 48% of the products are copied. In other terms, 70% of all the newly launched products are copied within 10 weeks' time. What is the reason if a brand company only cares about the recipe of the product, anyone else just needs to change the recipe and they are done. But if you build also innovation on packaging and technology, it takes you longer to get the innovation done, but for anyone to follow, it also means you have to go through the same process, invest in technology and packaging and everything else. So packaging not only makes innovation more visible, but it gives you a much longer lead time. So I guess that's where packaging and packaging technology really can make a difference. Good. And, and this is actually legitimate product copying. This is not knockoffs. Absolutely. Yes. Um, another hot topic is safety. And uh, Brian, I'm interested in uh, how technology standards can help maximize machine safety without adding unnecessarily to cost and uh, um, effort to deliver the machines. Well, safety networks now can provide a whole new level of integrated safety and diagnostics for machines. Unfortunately, we're now seeing a whole new round of the field bus wars from the industrial network suppliers, each proposing their own uh, network solution. Uh, but Nestle sees a, an emerging solution in open safety, which is an IEC compliant protocol that can run in the application layer of any standard network. With this protocol, uh, we're able to integrate the safety functions of the machines across the entire line. Uh, so we enhance the safety without a lot of overhead costs. Another important initiative for us to keep track of. Um, now I'm going to go to the marketing side with Lars and ask uh, if some of the marketing innovations and in packaging things that give us convenience and single-serve portions, can they still be sustainable? Uh, well, I wouldn't go as far as saying that they would be sustainable because there's no way of measuring and concluding that something is sustainable. But we have to remember that we live in a world where recently more than we crossed the line where 50% of the population live in urban areas. It's completely impossible to feed people without packaging in such a context. In addition to that, we also live in a world with urban habits, an increasing number of single households. And one of the big issues that we have now is food waste. In an urban area, let's say in Central or, or Western Europe, we can waste as much as 50% of the food that we buy due to irregular eating habits and the fact that we live alone. So if we want to uh, attack food waste, then we would probably have to use more packaging rather than less. And this might go in a completely opposite direction to consumer perception. We know for a fact that consumers, the first contact they have with our products is the packaging. And it's also the last contact they have when they bring the waste bin out. So there's a certain degree of um, lack of pleasure involved and um, misunderstanding of what the role of packaging really is. It's there to protect products and prevent waste. So in that perspective, using more packaging can actually be more sustainable than using less. Good. And uh, we have time for just one more question, so I'm going to give it back to Maurizio uh, and ask how our automation technology can help achieve some of these major goals. Yeah, <clears throat> the, the most cost-effective mainstream processor computation power, thanks to the Moore laws, permit us to have a technology that is on a totally different level in comparison of a standard PLC, PEC, or robot automation. The BNDR technology was always developed on integrated automation. And thanks to this, 
we can build machines that are more flexible, reliable. And for example, on motion control, with the BNR technology, you can go up to controlling the quick changeover that is needed for all the new products that are requested from the market, but also integrate robotic for packaging on the same line, on the same network. And this is the future. The future is on integrating robotic, integrating everything because it's always increasing the automation level of your machine, of what you need to have the product that are requested from the market. And they have to have a safety solution integrated on the same network that control the motion, that control the HMI and then control the logic. They love to have a better integration on packaging line and to have a line that is more productive as well as more safe. Thank you, Maurizio. Thank you very much for the participation on the panel. Thank you very much for everyone who went up to the stage.